Yo, what is popping guys? We are here on Pokemon Journal for the NPL playoffs week one, basically, of the playoffs, divisional round, um, quarterfinals, whatever you want to call it. Uh, we are facing Urko Perka again, um, division rival who made the playoffs one spot ahead of us, and we finished second and third in the division respect uh, in the conference respectively. So we have to play each other in the first round, which I really dislike to be honest. Um, I hate the team matchup versus the squad because it's like a really well drafted team around like Manaphy with two Volt Absorb user or Lightning Rod users, and like overall a pretty pretty decent team with a bunch of threats like Aurora and Holucha basically. <laughs> have a very solid chance of sweeping my team for that stuff get too weakened and you know, like I didn't want to play him a third time I beat him two uh, two times um, very convincingly but definitely felt like playing for him a third time was really really hard um, the last time we played he didn't bring mana fees so I really expect that to come um, just like the Mega Scepter and for that reason I brought Scepter for Azumarill <laughs> which as you see won't really do a lot of like won't really do a lot of damage to his squad because he decided not to bring them again. Um, he brought the Marowak, which is a big threat to my squad, and as a, like can at least toxic it. I don't have scars on this thing. I just have the Ice Beam, um, the potential Dragonite, um, Zapdos, and shit like that, or also Zapdos of course. Um, brings a pretty standard fortress with um, Earthquake, Rapid Spin, Gyro Ball, and Toxic. Uh, basically covers all of the switch into it. Um, should I decide to try and rapid spin his stuff away? Um, I can good KO defensive Marowak after Rock with Earthquake, Toxic 40 Zapdos obviously, and like Gyro Ball just just to make sure Holucha or Aurora's don't set up on me and I can like hit them for some nice damage. Um, Rapira here is my rocker this week. Also has the Toxic um, because I felt like he was very weak to Toxic stall the last or like not to Toxic stall but very weak to status overall. The last time we played, and I want to have like a very solid defensive core that um, can potentially spread toxic on his stuff and um, wall most of his threats. Like, I have a physically defensive Rapira, which basically shuts down every variant of um, Dragonite that is not like special or banded Aqua Tail, which I don't really expect. So, that's kind of cool. Um, that's my Rocker this week. I just couldn't really afford running Rocks on Fortress because I would miss out on a move that potentially. Um, Allows one of his big threats to come in for free, and I didn't want to risk that. I bring defensive Zard again. Uh, in hindsight, I probably should have gone with an SD set, which, looking at the squad, just six O's. Um, even if I had, even if I brought Belly Drum, um, I literally would have six O's. Um, I really contemplated a lot what kind of Zard I want to bring, but I felt like a fat squad um, would allow me to play more in my um, in my comfort zone. But um, looking back, I really should have brought SD or Belladrum ZX to um, easily sweep my opponent here. But obviously, the risk behind bringing SD or Belladrum is like stuff um, like Manaphy that could potentially revenge me, or Mega Scepter, which is a big threat, just like the Dragon Knight. Um, but I don't want to run max speed on, on the Zarx, um, which I don't really like to do. But I probably should have done it. But what can you do? <laughs> Weaver here is a Choice Bandit variant, I think. Um, yeah, I can't play with Isaac with Plate or Life or by Expert there. I decided to go with the raw power of Choice Band because it like, just doesn't have a good switch. And there's like a solid core that can pivot around it if you predict me correctly. If I'm like Life Warp, um, Diancy obviously it checks me kinda well. Um, oh my PC is lagging a little bit here. But um, obviously I could pack the Metal Claw, which I do, and that, that potentially shuts down Diancy and Auroras to a KO Diancy and Ocoing Auroras after rocks um, depending on us like definitely after rocks and even from pro depending on his set so that's kind of cool. Um, Celebi is a sub leech suit variant with um, Psychic and Sword Stance. Um, Sword Stance just in case I have the chance to set up on something like the Zapdos. Uh, if I pass an SD into my fat Zart it's basically GG like he doesn't really have a switch into it and I can O code stuff um, with Earthquake and Drag so that ZX probably wouldn't be able to O code um, at plus one had I brought a DD variant or shit like that. So, pretty cool set, I guess, if I pull it off. But um, you see how this game will go. And yeah, let's hop right into it. Um, I decide to lead off 
with my Zadex, trying to get my Mega off as early as possible, expecting him to lead off with either Metagross, Marowak, or um, Diancie to get his rocks up. I want to see what, what his rocker is. I really expect Diancie to beat because offensive Marowak and offensive Metagross are way better than like Stealth Rock sets that lose momentum if they come in on the wrong thing. So I really expected Diancie to um, have the Stealth Rock. Here I just go for the middle ground plan, go for the Will-O-Wisp. If he's Diamond Storm, he will do 25% to me. Um, if he's uninvested, even if he's in like um, max attack, he will not do more than 40 after the burn. So I have a very free Will-O-Wisp here, even though it could be a heal by that set. But I just want to get the chip off and make sure my Zard actually walks this um, Diancie here. Will-O-Wisp connects, which is great. The C-Set will reflect. And I wonder why it took like 13 weeks until an opponent brought um, Reflect versus me. I don't have a defog on my team, I ran Brick Break on Zard just once versus a team that has had Clefty and shit like that. It could have potentially um, set up this, uh, set up screens on me. But now, finally someone decides to uh, set up Reflect and that is like a pretty big problem to my team because most of, like, on from 11 months on my squad, um, 9 of them are uh, physical attackers basically. So, um, gonna be tough to play around to Reflect, but I have a solid wall core. It can potentially um, can potentially just uh, just pivot around the screens and like not allow to do too much damage. Then he yeah, decided to switch out um, into my Celebi, covering him staying in, go for the Diamond Storm on his Spell Talk, as well as him trying to switch out into uh, maybe the Zapdos because Zapdos, unless he has u and can't really touch me with and is using the fluid KO if he's uninvested. So that's kind of key. He gets out his rocks here, which is fine. I can always spin them away with Fortress. Once I weaken um, the marrow wet, and I have a free leech seed here, trying to um, get off the seed. As he um, decides to switch out into his Zapdos, um, I go for leech seed and I miss, and that is already a pretty crucial um, crucial miss here because one, I want to keep my um, Celebi healthy. If it's like a heat wave or U-turn set, I really need the leech seed recovery to not lose too much health. And had I hit the reflect here. The way he brought in his Zapdos, I knew that this is some kind of the Tompass variant. Like, I could really, I really, when I saw it, saw it coming in, I knew it was an agility pass set, which just makes so much sense with Marowak, Aurorus, and Metagross around. I really, like, I was 95% sure he wasn't, was a, um, the Tompass set with agility. I could have potentially, um, had I Leech Seeded, I would have just stayed in and spammed Leech Seed to, um, punish everything he wants to the Tompass out into. Once set up, but now I can't really go for the leech seed because I don't know how much speed he has. Um, he probably has more than I have because I only have 20, 20 speed EVs, I think. And if he's a sub um, agility baton pass variant, I could potentially already lose the game into an SD Marowak or something if I spam leech seed. So I can't really stay in and spam it. I have to switch out here. I just go for the. Um, do I go for my spell or something? No, I just go for the baton pass um, to see like if he really wants to get to plus two speed. Um, Zapdos goes to plus two, as I expected. Like, really unfortunate that I missed the lead sheet. Um, Yarpira even would have like enjoyed that here. Like, and getting chip on the Zapdos is kind of crucial because should I be able to baton pass an SD into Zard, um, I like need some prior damage on the Zapdos in order to um, Oko with the Dragon Claw. Like, Dragon Claw at plus two does like seventy five percent, so I either need rocks up or like some chip damage beforehand. So yeah, you should kind of suck, but it's fine. Um, still like long way, long game to go. Um, yeah, like after I see the agility, I know he has baton pass. He probably has discharge, and then like I doubt he has the HP grass or HP water to hit my rapier. So I felt like that was a pretty safe play after I saw the agility. Um, leech seed missing, like also sucked because I didn't really see an item. Uh, which could come into play later in the game, so we'll see. Like, knowing that he would le was leftovers or not could have been, like, pretty interesting, I, I guess, for me to know, because, like, every information you get is good information. So, um, yeah, I could just... I think I will just go for my spell drop here. Um, I see the taunt passes out. I contemplated going for Ice Punch, just in case um, he wanted to stay and go for another... Oh, no, I go for the Toxic, yeah. That was smart. Uh, <laughs> it was dumb. I didn't really expect Metagross to come in on my Rhyperia because even at plus two speed, Metagross is never able to two hit KO um, Rhyperia anyway. And I, had I gone like for um, an Ice Punch here or a Rock Blast, I would have gotten shit damage off on the um, 
on the Metagross, pop its balloon, then it's like basically useless. Um, Reflect is about to about to wear off unless Diancy is a indeed a what's it called? Um, a light play set, but um, I didn't think he would be. A, and like Shuka or Babiri Berry makes the most sense for his user. Didn't really felt like the screens would be up for much longer. So Metagross comes in, it's on a balloon, which kind of sucks, but I have a clean counter um, in my fortress here. I can just like fire off um, gyro balls to pop the balloon or like go for the earthquake or something once I popped it. Um, I decided to go for the gyro and what I didn't know is like I was fairly certain it does, but I wasn't 100% sure that the balloon pops through a substitute. Like it makes sense, but um, my opponent actually didn't know, but like I was fairly certain it would, but um, if that weren't the case, it would have been pretty annoying to deal with, but um, I was fairly certain when I went for the gyro ball that that would happen. So here yeah, I just stay in all the time. Um, on this Zen, ha Zen Headbutt, I contemplated switching out into um, into Rhyperia, I think, like just to get a harder Earthquake off. But um, yeah, just like decided to stay in and click Toxic for him to not want to stay in. But he was pretty adamant um, about like just getting rid of the Fortress, which I can understand. And um, looking back, because like the rocks up on my side of the field are very crucial for him to wear down the Charizard in order for like stuff like um, Marowak to be able to Oko it or even like a potential Specs or Auras. Um, another reason why the Leech Seed miss on Zapdos was kind of annoying is that like had I connected the Leech Seed I would have just like spammed Leech Seed in case he wanted to switch out our Baton Pass out and then, then like have the chip damage off on whatever wants to come in as well as the passive recovery on in this case Fortress which would have allowed me to one vs one the Metagross much more easily but yeah nothing you could do about it I will just fire up Earthquakes here to potentially knock him out at some point um, he gets he goes for the medium meshes thankfully he doesn't um, get um, any attack raises which could be scary but I spin on the little turn before I'm about to die leaving this um, Metagross at 40% um, which makes um, makes it easy to revenge it with Rapiria. You see, I don't, I don't take anything from this mesh. Um, I'm actually a Passerberry variant, not a leftover set, which is kind of annoying because Passerberry would have made it would have made a lot of sense um, on this like on this thing. Um, had he actually brought the mana fee in order like for me to get some chip damage off on with the earthquake and like preventing him from setting up for free. But yeah, nothing you can do. He goes on into this Diancy. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we'll get just set up his rocks again. Nothing I can do about it because my uh, my fall is dead. But I decided like let's just um, exchange rocks here. I will go for the um, earthquake here to burn a potential sugar berry and like to burn a turn of reflect if he wants to go for it. I see earth power, so good thing um, I didn't like go zart again on this thing to potentially like roost solid because earth power actually would have done quite a fuck ton to um, to my Charizard. So yeah, good for me. I. <laughs> like, didn't um, assume he was just Moonblast Diamond Storm, so that worked out, I guess. Um, he burns the Sugar Berry, which I really expected on this thing, and I decided to save my Rapira as fodder. I have a clean switch into my L Driver here as he reflects up again. And um, I don't really mind this too much because with five turns of Reflect around, um, a potential Leech Seeding Celebi. Um, a special attacking Celebi also like Psychic still hits everything besides the Drapion pretty hard and Drapion is checked by um, my Zardex pretty easily and like even L Driver here my girl can um, can take a knockoff can take um, a poison jab with ease so I can potentially just the Taunters out or like get some chip off with the Leech Sheet if it wants to come in so yeah they just decided to go for another Leech Sheet and need this passive recovery and see Makes a uh, makes a switch into his um, into his dragon and I miss again. Um, this miss, as you will see, uh, see later, was like absolutely disastrous for me because now um, he can potentially pursue trap me uh, <laughs> with like getting a huge hit off on me. I have the baton pass, but I'm not sure about speed because like he could be a max speed variant or like at least a speedy variant that speed creeps like a, a minimum invested. Um, Celebi or something and now whatever I 
I'm gonna baton pass out into um, has to take rocks. Uh, potential poison trap on knockoff if I get the baton pass out. Um, get the baton pass out before he can attack me, and then like yeah, like just gets whittled down. And this I need damage on this um, Drapion in order to kill it with potential Weavile if it's like a bull tier set or with the Zadex with the protect. Uh, yeah, Le Leech Sheet misses and you will soon see that this Leech Sheet was incredible, like an incredible crucial miss, like even worse than the first one I, I feel like, and even that, like that was already a pretty pretty big play, like a pretty big miss, and I, uh, that's what I wanted to say. So I go for the Baton Pass out, I don't want to get Pursuit Trapped here by a slow variant, but he just goes for the Poison Trap and he gets 46% off on my, on my Celebi and that poison that could either be um, a really really high um, jolly roll or like a low to mid adamant roll and considering I don't know his set like I don't know his item and considering his agility pass on his Zapdos um, alongside screams um, on DNC, I'm fairly certain that this is adamant um, had he gotten like a lower roll I could have known it was a jolly or like could have like gauged, gauged his set a little better but um, that will also come into play later. I got a gets a really high roll here with the with this poison draft, which obviously is not hex, but which makes it harder for me to um, identify a set. Um, I have a Thomas out into my Zardex, which like just was a set. I think I get fire off a Willow Wisp here just to like get some chip on whatever wants to come in. Um, no, I just go for the earthquake, not playing around with the threat here. Um, makes sense. I willow the Zapdos here just to like make sure. Um, Make sure I get shit damage off on it and put it in range for potential plus two, plus the Drank Claw. I mean, actually, it's static Zapdos, if you haven't noticed. So, um, there is no defog. Obviously, he doesn't want to defog anything away, especially the screens. But rocks are like hurting him a lot. As you see, like, he's three months weak to rocks, and Drake one doesn't really appreciate getting shit down. So, um, yeah, I really expect him to roost after the. Um, after the burn damage, but but he actually reveals to be um, dual, uh, not dual sweeps, but he reveals to have two mons on the squad that have to reflect. And on my earthquake, um, he sets up the reflect, which is a pretty smart play, knowing that I cannot can never knock him out with the dragon claw from the strength or even the flare blitz. And like he sets him another reflect. Um, now being faster than my Zard, obviously with the agility boost, and yeah, things aren't looking too good for me. Um, on this next turn, I actually decide to Earthquake again, I think. Yeah, see, so like, puts, um, puts him in range for some attacks with the, um, with the Discharge and, like, forcing me to roost, basically. Um, if I, if he Baton passes out here and he goes into Marowak and, or Auroras on my Earthquake, um, on this turn, he basically gets a kill anyway because with the Reflect both take the Earthquake, um, pretty handily, like, both don't appreciate it with rocks up especially, but they still would get a kill because Zard X is in range for a hyper voice, a modest hyper voice on Adamant, Earthquake or anything like that, and that, that kind of sucks. <laughs> so I'm forced to roost here because Zard X is my wind down now. Like once I get like force him to uh, or once I deal with the reflect setter, Zard X really seems really hard to beat uh, for his team. Like he can't really break through it, especially like if I don't allow Marowak to set up or if I get some shit damage off on it um, later in the game. So he goes into Auroras and like now I have a big problem because my Zad was forced to use that. Um, I can't take um, any hit he wants to throw at me in the specs or um, ancient power, but I just like can't st stay in because Earthquake just um, Earthquake just don't doesn't kill from this range. With reflect up um, I would do like 30% and never get a kill yet, and I can't take two hits from these auroras anyway. So I have to pivot around this thing um, unless until screens wear off. So I go into my um, Azumarill here on the engine power. It doesn't get the boost, thankfully. Um, had it gotten the boost here, that would have been GG guaranteed. Like it would have swept me with an engine power boost. So kind of rough. Um, I have to go for the toxic here to put it on the time and then potentially put it in range. I'm specially defensive, so I. Um, so I. Um, Guaranteed to live to freeze value because he isn't life up or any boosting item or something like that, uh, which is cool. And toxic goes down. And now I have to pivot around here. I expected to go for the ancient power here because um, getting the boost would still be 
preclusion. So I decide to sack my Rapiria here. Um, on his Ancient Power, which fails, um, Toxic Damage racks up. But um, now I'm gonna bait the Ancient Power with the Weavile. <laughs> he knows I'm not Shardy Berry, but he doesn't want to like over predict or anything because if he if I go for the low kick or the metal claw and he um, just goes for an goes for an um what's called goes for, for an ice type move um he basically sweeps it so I ba bait the ancient power go into my Celebi and uh, now like I have to go back into my um, Azumarill I think to put it in range with the toxic um put it in range for my Weavile to um to revenge kill with the uh, with the ice shot. Um, Zapdos was actually revealed to be a a light clay variant, which made it like impossible for me to, or near impossible for me to pivot around this um, this Aurora. Had he like predicted my bait with Weavile earlier, I would have been like in a super rough spot and probably would have lost the game right here. Um, I'm down th three to five, but it's not too bad at all. Um, depending on the set, this Bandit Ice Shot is a roll, but because I'm invested, I do 15% guaranteed and I'm able to kill him. So that's cool. <laughs> I like fire up the Ice Shot hoping I would kill. I do kill. Um, I don't know if he was invested. Might have been a roll, but I doubt he was. Like, he needs a lot of speed in order to, like, outspeed stuff at plus two. Um, now he goes into Drapion, and I'm like, wait a minute. Like, why doesn't he just go into Marowak and clean this, uh, clean this game up? Um, depending on the set, he has to know that I'm banded. Um, yes, I could be Icicle Plate, but um, had he calculated, I'm not sure if he calculated the ice, ice Shot damage, but had he calculated and know that I would ban it, Marowak um, basically sweeps the game from here because um, Zard X doesn't kill with the Earthquake and get, unless I get the max roll, so <laughs> um, that's kind of unfortunate. But he goes great and I'm like, wait a minute, I can just go Zard and roost up and like, what kills Zard now from this range I'm at? Um, he fires off another poison jab. Um, that's quite strange. That's twenty-eight percent here, and this is another roll that could have been like either low or mid adamant or a pretty high jolly roll. And I, I'm still not sure what it was, so I'm kind of fortunate that I'm still not able to identify it. Said, but what can you do? I can just roost up here on the switch into DNC uh, with the rocks and the burn damage. I'm actually able to kill with the earthquake. Um, basically, sex it here. I have like no. I could have potentially gone out into um, my Celebi and tried to um, set up a bit pass on it, but I was at like a very very low amount of health um, in order to do that. Um, I get a crit on the earthquake, which does not matter. Um, earthquake always does like about 35% to the to the max defense Diancy, so um, the crit definitely does not matter. Mm -hmm. He goes on into Zapdos, and I'm like, yeah, this is great. I had, I know I outspeed because I outsped earlier. Um, before you set up the agility, I have no Dragon Claw kills from this range, even if it's max max. Um, only a thing that could be a problem would be um, if he is like, if he is what we call, um, like he is static, he is a static set, but would have like really sucked had he gotten the static on this Dragon Claw. I go for Dragon Claw here, get the kill, but X coming through, um, picking up kills 20 and 21 on the season, I think. Um, really solid now. And now he goes out into his Marowak, and if I like go for the earthquake here and get the roll in my favor, if it's a roll, like it probably is HP invested, so I would never do like I probably would never do 76% here. But um, if I get a roll here on my earthquake, I win the game guaranteed. But I have no reason to make this play. I can just go for the um, go into my Celebi, sack it um, to the um, to the earthquake, and like now I can get in my Weaver. Uh, Weaver gets a kill with knockoff guaranteed on this Marowak, or it gets rid of any item that Drake has. Um, whatever he wants to do, if he switches out, um, Zardex wins because um, I knock off the item of Drake and if it's like a Sugar Bear variant or anything like that, I um, I'm guaranteed to beat it. And if he switches out, Marowak comes in at 50%, which guarantees me the knockoff with the um, with the earthquake on Zard. So he basically has to stay in here. I, I have to lock myself into. Um, into knock into knockoff here, um, killing him. Marowak makes a smart plan, just sex it like had he had he switched into Drapion, it would have been a giant giant shot. And now Drapion comes in. Um, Drapion he actually is gonna reveal the choice scarf on this turn. Um, another turn where I wished I would uh, was the ice explode variant. Um, in which case I could have gotten the ice shot damage off and then like revenge kill with the Zadek. 
but um, he's gonna reveal the the um, choice gap set. Um, we calculated, we talked about it after the game. Earthquake from my Zard, um actually from 63%, has a 50% chance to knock him out um, with his investment. It's like 60, 60 HP at least. And I'm like slightly invested in attack. Um, there are 8 rolls in my favor, 8 rolls in his favor to um, to live the earthquake from my Zard X. Um, I will stack my Weaver here and he like locks himself into earthquake. Um, now I have like a couple different plays. Um, Adam and Earthquake is a guaranteed 2 KO even if I um, go for the Willow West on turn it would do like 45 to 45 on the or 48 on the first turn and then like 20 like 26 27 after the burn <laughs> which definitely like I'm at 73% um, he definitely would have like 2 KO me if he's an Adam and set. Because I didn't know he was jolly, actually, it is a jolly set, um, just a heads up. Um, had I known he was, like, a jolly set, I could have gone for the Willow Whiskey and Zeus stole it. Um, and, like, unless he crits me, I win the game. Um, had I hit the Leech Seed on my, on the Drapion earlier, I would have gotten 12% off, put him at 51% and get the guaranteed kill, um, with the Earthquake. Neither of this happens, I have to go for the Earthquake. Now he reveals to be Jolly because he gets a pretty low roll with the um, with the Earthquake. I could have roost stalled him like up to up to full um, unless I until I like can live two Earthquakes potentially and then like two K on. But I I didn't know, like I couldn't risk him being Adamant and just two K on me. I had to had to go for the um for the Earthquake here because Adamant Scarf just makes as much sense as um Jolly Scarf versus me like this. Basically no difference. Um, maybe if he had the scarf uh, Stoutland, which is basically the only reason for him to run a jolly set. But yeah, <laughs> I have to go for the earthquake. He does 43 with his earthquake, which would have meant I lived after I connected the will o' wisp. Um, if I had I known that he was a jolly set, I got it for the earthquake. He had the absolute low roll, actually 58.8%, um, the lowest roll possible, and I lose like lose the game. <laughs> GG to my opponent. I like. I'm not like mad at anything or something, but it was just like a pretty frustrating end to a pretty frustrating season. I didn't feel like I was outplayed a lot this year. I didn't feel like I was outprepped a lot. Um, a lot of games came down to um, the roles, to be honest, uh, which I lost. Like I got flinched to death in one week, which would have like guaranteed me to win had I uh, broken through once. Um, I got max rolled in week two. I got um, I misclicked in one game to lose, uh, to lose it. It was just like an overall frustrating season. Now I miss um, two very crucial leech seeds, which put me in a bad spot and put me on a spot where I have to rely on rolls that I don't get. Um, it was a fun game, not gonna lie. Um, shout out to Urka, he was like a really good sport um, during all three games we had. Um, he like, brought a pretty smart team. Reflect is like was. Um, really, really smart with me. I wonder why nobody brought that early in the season. Um, like, just shut down so many of my special attackers, uh, <laughs> of my physical attackers, sorry. And, like, it just makes it so much easier to deal with my Zard. And I didn't really expect it to come because, like, yes, Diane's and Zephyrs could potentially run screens, but I felt like they would miss out on important um, moves if they want to, like, go for the screens because like Zapdos misses out on potential defog or roost or a coverage move. Um Diancy misses out on heal bell or like a second step or anything, which like makes a potential setup fodder for like for example for my um Celebi. Like had I had I been um a nasty plot Celebi variant, I actually would have swept him. Um <laughs> swept him clean and he already got swept by that um early in the season. So yeah. I guess he won the won the matchup here by bringing what he decided to bring. Um, had I like, did I, um, in case I had some different sets, I probably, like, some slight, slight changes on my sets, like, maybe not Zap Zipazu, um, maybe like SD Zard or Belly Drum Zard over Bulky Zard, but, um, definitely, I definitely still had a lot of chances to win the game, but, yeah, um, RNG came into play, which is kinda, kinda annoying. I feel like, like, I, Literally, I just had to hit the um, leech seed earlier. Like one, even one of them, one of those two um, would have been crucial because leech seed on Zapdos 
it doesn't allow him to um, baton pass out because leech the damage would have like racked up on whatever he wants to come in, put it in range for stuff. Um, has not burned screen turns more, shit like that. Um, leech seed on the grave here would have been crucial. Would have just like I didn't have to rely on any roll <laughs> if I hit the leech seed. So yeah, it's like pretty frustrating. Obviously, like I don't, I'm not like too mad losing. Um, I felt like my late season comeback was pretty pretty great. Um, after starting one to four, I was very very proud. I made playoffs, <laughs> finishing the season six and one. But yeah, I felt like. It was still like my season to lose in my conference at least. I felt like I had a tremendous matchup versus any potential um, semifinals opponent. I like I would have loved to be back in the finals and shut like some people up, but nothing you can do about it, I guess. Um, sorry for the long like long post comments, thirty minutes. <laughs> I don't know if you wanted if you would enjoy it, but yeah, we're out round one of the playoffs. Um, good game to my opponent. Pretty frustrating to say the least. Um, I'm not like salty or anything. I'm I'm already over it, but obviously like recording it a couple of days after the game, it uh, actually is like it stings again. But nothing you can do about it. It's part of the game. Um, I'll definitely be back for season four, trying to um, finally win this league again. Um, it was kind of bullshitted out in season two. With this game, I feel like I should have should have won if things went a little bit more in my favor. If, um, be it rolls he got with the poison jab, be it rolls um, I didn't get with earthquake, be it like leech seed misses, but it happens like nothing you can do about it. Um, I'll definitely be back and try to win a chip next year. Um, gonna grab some heat again and hopefully like you guys still enjoy my still enjoy my vids even though I like haven't won chip in quite some while now. But I'll definitely be back and hope to like hope to make you proud with some heat sets and. A couple more playoff wins. <laughs> so, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. Leave a like and a comment if you did. And catch you um, later today, actually, in my um, ITL battle with Gypsy King. And that's going to be a good one. <laughs> so, see you then.